Good morning, live from Las Vegas. It's theCUBE at AWS reInvent 2021. This is our fourth day of coverage, the third full day of the conference. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. Dave, we have had a tremendous number of conversations. In fact, we have two live sets, over 100 guests on the program, and I have another, I've got two Daves for you for the price of one. <laughs> Dave Trader joins us, the field CISO client advisor at Presidio. We're going to be talking about ransomware and security Dave, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So, so looking at your background, you've got a very cool background. You hold numerous cybersecurity certifications, including CISSP. You've received numerous endorsements from the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and NSA. And in 2018, you graduated from the FBI's CISO Academy in Quantico. Wow. Yeah, I did. It, it sounds like he's a man with a very special set of skills. Uh, <laughs> I think sure. you're right. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. One of the things that we have seen, uh, the, the cybersecurity landscape has changed dramatically in the last year and a half, 22 months or so. I was reading some stats, ransomware, an attack happens every, once every 11 seconds. It's now a matter of when, not yes. if. Talk to us about some of the things that you're seeing, the threat landscape changing, ransomware as a service. What's going on? So that, the last part that you mentioned with ransomware as a service is key. The access to be able to launch attacks has become so simplified that the, 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 uh, the attacker level doesn't have to be sophisticated. Really, you can get down to the 100 level brand new hackers that are just getting into the space. They, they can go to a help desk and they can purchase ransomware and they can run this ransomware that, has, that comes with quality assurance, by the way, and if they didn't run correctly, they've got a help desk support system that'll help them run this in, uh, you know, as a criminal in a, enterprise. Um, the access is really what, is what has made this so prevalent and it really exacerbated the problem to the massive scale that we're seeing today. Yeah, and of course we're only hearing about the big ones, you know, we're, you know uh, Conti, Colonial Pipeline, but as I mentioned, an, an attack occurring every 11 seconds. I also was reading the first half of calendar 21 that ransomware was up nearly 11x. So the trajectory, it's going the wrong way. It's going up and to the right in the way that we don't want it to go. Are they becoming more brazen? Is it easier ransomware as a service, but also they're able to be paid in Bitcoin and that's less traceable? Yeah, so um, exponential is not even fair, right? Because that's not even a fair assessment because that up and right, it, it's just, it's been so pervasive that we just see that continued growth. Uh, you know, it, there's uh, how you know uh, different ways on how we're going to stop that, and what we're what we're doing in a, in a, from a, a national perspective is all coming into play, and what we're going to do about it. You know, so the one of the things that I'm seeing that's uh, kind of new is the taunting aspect. So the taunting aspect is, uh, you know, th they've been in your network for a little while. The dwell time's extended, and and they're collecting intelligence. But what they're doing is, you know, they used to let you after they would present you with the ransomware note, they would let you kind of circle the wagons, and then you would come to a decision point as an organization of, am I going to pay or am I not? Well, and they would give you a little bit of time to deliberate. Well, now during your deliberation time, they're actually sending text to the CEO and the CFO, and, there's, and they're 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 showcasing their their uh, technical prowess and that they've got you, they own you at that point, and they're, they're texting you know, on your personal device, and they're saying, you should go ahead and pay us or we're going to make this worse. The taunting aspect is even twisting the knife, and it's uh, you know, out of bounds. It's, even from a criminal aspect, I expect that to be out of bounds. You know? Crazy, and, and of oh. course, you know, some of the things that we've seen, um, uh, the, the White House's counter ransomware initiative, a coalition of 30 countries aimed to ramp up global efforts to attack that. Is, are you seeing cybercrime with the rise and the proliferation? Do you think there's going to be more regulations that organizations are going to be having to deal with? What do you think some of the things are that we're going to see on that legal front? Yeah, so we have to we have to leverage compliance, and there's a lot of really great frameworks out there today that we are leveraging, and there's there's good methodology on how to stop this. The issue is the, it's the adoption and really the, the the knowledge, the subject matter expertise, and really that consultant side. That's the message that I try and get out to to, to our customers and our clients, and I'm trying to really get them to understand what that evolution looks like and what what is needed in each discipline, because there's various disciplines across the board, and you almost have to have them all. Um, you know, to, to, in order to be able to stop ransomware and solve for that ransomware problem. And I do think the regulation is going to be key. I also think that I need some air support from not only the federal government, but our, our internet service providers. And, and, and we as a free country, we need to be careful of, of you know, on, on some, of that, some of those fronts. But I, I, I still think that I would appreciate you know, my ISP doing a little bit of block and tackle for me you know, and helping me out. Even though I want the freedom to do and, and be able to do whatever I want, I would still like them to say, you know, we're going to block known bats. Because you know, it, it would just be nice to have a little bit of support even on that side. So how does an ISP prevent me from handing out my password? 
and being fooled in a, in a, in a phishing attack is the, yeah. is the question. And, and, and is, that, is that still a real issue? So I wouldn't put that on, I wouldn't put that on the ISP. <laughs> I would put that more on the endpoint and some personal responsibility, right? Of With course. knowing, <laughs> yeah, and I do, I do stress that a little Sorry, bit. But relatively <laughs> early morning sarcasm, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, yeah, so I do put that on, but there, but there are tremendous um, partners that I work with that are able to do that and automate a lot of the, that for you. And I need to make it simple, but simple is hard. And that's what, you know, especially in cybersecurity, we want to make it simple for it and, and really be able to remove the threat to the end user and protect the user. But in order to do that, there's a ton of things and a ton of sophistication and innovation that happens in the background. And we really need to be able to showcase how that's done. And I'm, I, it's, obviously I'm excited about it, but we need more people that are able to just specialize in this. We need more good guys that are able to come in and help us uh, on this front. I also think we need to break down some barriers for, on the competition with you know, market share and the partners. We need to, we need to kind of elevate the conversation a little bit and we all need to work together because we're all in the same boat when it comes to how we're being attacked. Um, you know, from a national perspective on a global scale and I think that if we elevate the conversation our collective uh, mindset in that, 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 uh, that, that mind share is going to be able to really help us uh, innovate and, and put a stop to this. So then how is Presidio and AWS, how are you helping that? I know you've got a, a ransomware mitigation kit. Talk to us about that. How are you going to be helping, especially the cyber security skills gap that's going on like five years now. Sure, yeah, that skills gap is going to continue to, uh, we're going to continue to see that grow as well. And, and we're efforting that on, on many fronts. But I'm, I'm really excited about the ransomware mitigation kit that got uh, unveiled yesterday. Um, I got a call earlier this year from uh, AWS and, and uh, we basically, the, the, the question was posed to me, you know, what are we going to do about this? Is from an AWS perspective, what can we do? Um, you know, because the, the cyber adversaries are, uh, uh, are, are, are relatively unchecked and, and, and their attitude is, what are you going to do about it? So AWS posed the question, what are we going to do about it? And what we came up with was, you know, uh, it, as, as an isolated organization or as an isolated discipline as, with like uh, managed detection and response or endpoint protection, um, that silo could not by itself accomplish an, uh, the solve to, to, to eliminate ransomware or to make a dent in, in eliminate ransomware. So what we had to do was combine disciplines and we reached over to BCDR, disaster recovery and, and, and our backup teams. And we said, let's put together endpoint protection, MDR, and let's, let's merge the two of these. And let's automate that. So that what happens is, is when we detect a ransomware attack, there's, there's a specific indicators of compromise that happen in the attack. The, the, the endpoint protection, which is CrowdStrike in our case, can see that and can notify that and then can tell the backup and recovery team, hey, we know that this is, a, this is an indicator of compromise, we know that this system has is, is been owned, and then there's an inflection point where we can ask the, the user if they want to manually intervene or if they want us to automate that and intervene for them. So it really keeps production going full time and uh, it, doesn't, it takes away the cyber adversary's ability to hold our data hostage. So this is, an, it was, this one, I don't, and I don't use hyperbole uh, frequently, but this is a monumental uh, you know, uh, evolution of what, of what we're going to see and how to prevent ransomware. No. Wow, I was reading that, that ransomware is backups, or you, you talked about backup, that backup, backup attacks are on the rise as well. How can organizations, how, how can they work with Presidio and AWS? You said, describe this as monumental, kind of game changing. Yeah. How can they work with you guys to, to implement this technology so that we can start dialing down yeah. the threats? Yeah, so we would love to, we would love to hear from you, right? Give us a, give us a call. Um, but uh, our teams, you know, with, with Cloud Endure and AWS Cloud Endure and CrowdStrike, what they've really come up with, and, and you have to have these two things ahead of time. So I, I sit on our critical incident response team and you know, I, I do work with you know, the, the Bureau as often as I can on, on attribution, but you have to have these ahead of time. So your, 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 your uh, critical response plan needs to be in place. And if you have the two things that, we, that we've really uh, put a lot of effort into over the last eight months, if you've got CrowdStrike and you've got Cloud Undo on the back end, we can establish all of those um, and, and really set this up for you to eliminate that threat. And, and that's what we're excited to showcase this week and you know, in the coming months. And, we're gonna, and we've also uh, got additional things and additional features that we plan to add to that in the, in the coming months. So. Dave, what are your thoughts on the partnership between private industry and government entities uh, you mentioned that the level of sophistication to engage in, in this bad behavior doesn't necessarily have to be have to rise to the level of state-sponsored. Um, but can we do this in the private sector by ourselves? What are your what, what are your sort of philosophical well, I, thoughts? On I that? will give you uh, my, I will give you a, a statistic on this, and it will it'll be self-explanatory. But um, eighty percent 
of our critical infrastructure in the United States is privately held. So we're unique in that perspective. We aren't like some other countries where they can just mandate the requirement that the, the government will control critical infrastructure. It's privately held here in the United States. So you almost have to invite the federal government to come in, even though you are a critical infrastructure, you, they still have to be invited to come help you. And that partnership is key in order to be able to defend yourself, but also to defend the nation. Our power grids, our, our, our water sources. I mean, you'll see those are private, private companies, but we need that federal help. And I, I try and evangelize that partnership. I mean, you know, there's always the, um, you know, when you think about working with federal agencies like the, like the FBI, uh, there's a little bit of hesitation. And you're not really quite sure. I will tell you that those, those men and women are, um, uh, they're amazing. They're amazing to work with. They're, they're really good at what they do. And, and, and you're certainly, it's a partnership. And they have a, a whole division set up. As the Office of the Private Sector is designed to have these conversations and help you prepare. And then in the unfortunate you know, instance where you might have an attack, they're right there trying to figure out who did that to you. you know, and, and you're a victim. You're a victim of a federal crime at that point. And they, they treat you with such care and you know, they're, uh, they do such a great job. So I think we have to engage them in order to, to you know, and we should actually be able to help them with the technology and, how, and make it easier for them to do their job is something I'm also very interested in. Talk to me about your interest, as a last question, in terms of what's going to go in here, we are wrapping up 2021, entering 2022, which hopefully will be a much better year for on many fronts, including the decrease in ransomware. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're excited about? There's so much technology, there's so much opportunity and innovation going on with AWS and its partner ecosystem. What, what excites you? What opportunities do you see as we head into 2022? Yeah, so I do see some, I do see some threats that are going to evolve. Um, ransomware is certainly going to be more of the same until we get this out in you know, this new methodology and what we've built, until that becomes widely adopted. I think we, you know, we we're not going to make a dent in the numbers that we're seeing just yet, but I'm hoping that that will change when you know, when the industries do start to adopt that. The other thing that I'm seeing is, uh, I think operational technology is going to take a hit in 2022 because the bad guys have started to figure out how, um, you know, that, that, the, that operational technology is not as, uh, uh, it, it's not front and center and it's not top of mind for a lot of CISOs, so they're, they're targeting that weakness and going after that. So I think we really need to brace for that and, and really uh, get in front of that. Uh, so th that's one of the things that I'm prepping for is, is really the, that operation and IOT conversation and, and how I can help uh, organizations and even, even home users you know, with some of the stuff that you've got you know, maybe in your own home that could be used against you. So. Right, because that work from anywhere is going to persist for quite some time. Dave, thank you so much for joining Dave Nicholson and me on the program this morning talking about what's going on in the threat landscape ransomware, but also this monumental shift and from, from a technology and a partnership perspective that Presidio and AWS are doing to help customers in every industry, private and public sector. We appreciate your insights. Thank you for having me, this is great. Thanks for being here. Thank you. For Dave and Dave, I'm Lisa. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.